recognize. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, you implemented the use of omnibus resolutions in antitrust investigations. These resolutions, in effect, give the chair of the FTC sole control over FTC investigations. The chair could direct staff to investigate a transaction, sign all subpoenas without a commission vote, which was previously necessary in investigations of almost all mergers and business conduct. Former commissioners Phillips and Wilson, Wilson resigned over much of this uh, type of action from you, uh, said that this paragraph eliminated the only layer of commission oversight. Wouldn't you agree that the use of omnibus resolutions in this matter undermines the bipartisan nature of the commission model? And are you trying to turn the commission into your own personal empire? Congressman, omnibus resolutions have long been used at the FTC before I joined. It's fairly standard for there to be omnibus resolutions on the consumer protection side, again, long before I joined. Changes we made brought the consumer protection side in symmetry with the competition side in order to empower our staff to act nimbly. Okay, let's talk about that because the staff has been leaving in droves. A report by Bloomberg found that 71 senior attorneys left the agency in the two-year period between 2021 and 2022, the highest number of departures in the category for a comparable two-year period since 2000. Uh, Coincidentally, the Progressive Change Campaign happens to have a list of 400 recommended names for positions in the FTC and the Biden administration. Has anyone, including Adam Green of the Progressive Change Campaign, communicated with you to hire any of these individuals? No. Okay. And have you hired any of these individuals? No, I don't know what list you're talking about, okay. to be honest. Um, Let's move on to this committee and your responsiveness or lack thereof to this committee, following up on what the Chairman asked, um, in March, uh, your director of the Office of Congressional Relations testified before my subcommittee on responsiveness and accountability to oversight regarding your refusal to produce documents related to this committee's oversight of the FTC's harassment of Elon Musk following his acquisition of Twitter. It's well known that the FTC frequently seeks extensive information from the party parties that it investigates. When those parties fail to produce what's required for the FTC to conduct its investigation, the FTC seeks sanctions. In the FTC's response to this committee's inquiry, most of what it has provided is already publicly available or otherwise incomplete. I find it inconceivable that the FTC would tolerate such a production from parties under its investigation. So what should this committee do and take from the FTC's paltry production to date on this matter? Congressman, our team has been enormously responsive. We've been working day after day to accommodate this committee's requests. We've offered and provided numerous non-public briefings, including on the matter that you mentioned. Uh, it is true when we have an ongoing law enforcement investigation, there are additional considerations we have to take into account to make sure we're not compromising law enforcement or chilling any of the free speech of the third parties that communicate with us. Does that include communication through non-governmental uh, email accounts? Because in the limited materials that you provided, we can see that your staff communicated using Gmail accounts. Uh, in other instances, employees from other agencies were using the employee's email account attached to that separate agency. So you were talking about how you're committed to using government communications methods. I don't know if you're aware that your staff is not, but what steps have you taken to secure responsive material from sources outside the FTC? Congressman, whenever anybody on boards into the FTC, we provide extensive training to make sure everybody knows only to use authorized devices. If sometimes inadvertently there is a message that props up somewhere else, you're supposed to forward it to your FTC email, and I imagine that's why it was actually captured in those productions. Okay. You asked Congress for a historic budget increase of $160 million or 37 uh, percent, citing staffing shortages, which you're largely responsible for, and insufficient resources. Uh, did you announce a joint effort within the DOJ Antitrust Division uh, with the FTC to send staff to Europe to assist with implementation of their Digital Markets Act? Congressman, we have a really fantastic Office of International Affairs that I inherited. It was launched in 2007 during the Bush administration. As part of our international efforts, we're routinely sending detailees. Do you know how much that costs? Excuse me? How much does it cost to send staffers to Europe? I don't know off the top of my head, but we're happy to provide that information if it would be helpful to you. Okay, well, uh, due to the uh, rank partisanship that's, that's come up in your agency, the uh, the fact that you all are ignoring congressional requests for information and the wastefulness that we've seen, uh, I know that uh, the Appropriations Committee is, is marking up you know, your budget as we speak, and they are seeking a 25 percent reduction in funding for the FTC today. Actually, the, the Appropriations Committee is going to be passing that uh, government funding bill. So 
Uh, actions have consequences, Madam Chair, and you're about to see what consequences your actions have had. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. The uh, gentlelady from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairwoman. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. I was told. I was, sorry, told. I, was, I was just told that too and <laughs> forgot. The gentlelady from uh, the other side.